was the original founding aim for arms? Uh, well, to, to uh, <laughs> sound and proper information, information on research, information on personal things, all the bit about the, you've got some things in there this time, all the things about um, uh, depression and all the rest of it. All, we tackled all those sort of things. We had a, a councillor who was a member of our, um, not the council, and <laughs> She was a councillor on, yeah. on the team, but not a member of the council, of course. But she was a specialist. And um, so she she had all this question of the, what were we going to do about depression? How could we help people with that? And the telephone, the telephone counselling service, um, <laughs> we started that in, because it was the very first thing. It was the thing we could do was to actually talk to people or write things right and yeah. we could go away and find out and then write and tell people right. so we didn't have to be researchers or doctors or you know we could do that so this was the first thing we did and we we set up the telephone counseling service because it meant that there was nothing else like it absolutely nothing right so the telephone counselling service was initially started with, I think, 20 voluntary people, all with MS or a carer of an MS person. The idea was that they would be able to operate and answer calls from their own home, right? And so the British Telecom got involved with an arrangement so that we could have everybody's own telephone, they could have a shift it would be known eventually when they were counsellors that they were operating from 6 till 12 or whatever and the number could switch but one number and we've got some leaflets which says one number just one number and you could get all of that all those people any whoever was on duty well I was one of the counsellors at the beginning and I can remember a, a, a young lady ringing up um Later in the evening, late because this was in her home, and she said, "I don't. I'm sorry about ringing now." And I said, "That's all right. We're 24 hours." And she said, "But I can only do this when my parents go to bed." See, so we were. Full, there was no question. We'd actually identified an area which really needed something. Well, it went on from there to all the other things about families, about carers, and everything else. Over the years, all of that got attended to. We set up our own centre, as I said. We worked with Brunel University for several years to produce booklets and so on, looking at the the, the personal side of the whole thing. Yeah. So it was quite a big thing that was, and 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 so that was how arm. That's why arms was set up for that purpose. But of course, on the way, we found that. There was a piece of research here we could support for £5,000, which was somebody had an idea and they just wanted to test it out, and it would fit in with what we were doing. So you started doing bits of research, so we did that. And eventually, of course, we had a, a research portfolio of probably £700,000 a year, I suppose. So we were not small anymore. We were a big game now. We, we had a, a, a research professor who um, understood the dietary thing very well indeed, and he was the, the master of the work that we did about this, right? all the development. And um, he and I got on very well. And I said to him one day, you know, this question of we ought to be speaking to one or two more of these people, you know, face to face. And he said, well, that's all right, he'd come here. So I said, tell you what, why don't we have what I called in educational supper parties? So as part of his research area, about, I think, once every couple of months, he would identify somebody that, uh, you know, a, a doctor or a researcher who could come and do something useful and find out what his abilities were at putting it over and so on and then he would invite them we would provide the food and the whole of the arms committee would come or as many as could would come and we'd have supper and the speaker would speak just to us 
So we had a council of people who actually knew an enormous amount after a few years of, of, of things which other people wouldn't. So am I right in thinking that ARMS was responsible for the network of therapy centres? Oh, absolutely. That we've now got today. Oh, yes. How did they come about? <laughs> Another last story now, is he? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I... I attended, and I, know I was the chief executive, but quite frankly, I, I, I was a hands-on chief executive, and, and I, what I didn't like was meetings, too many. I liked to be out there working with the people, really. So at the first opportunity, there was, go and talk to this, which I'd be off, right, and saying to somebody, well, look after it while I'm away. <laughs> anyway, they got a call from a, a, a professor... Um, uh, uh, James in uh, Dundee one day and he said to me you don't know me but he said I've uh, I've been told about you by some of my mama's friends that I've got up here so I said oh yeah so he said yes well he said I, I, cut a long story short I've just come back from a, a meeting in America he said and um, I've heard uh, um, a, 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 a talk on treatment of multiple sclerosis or four multiple sclerosis with hyperbaric oxygen. He said, and uh, that's quite impressive. So he said, I've made a tape of it, and if you'd like to come up, you can listen to it and we can talk about it. So I went to Dundee, because that was how it happened. You know, he rang today, and then Dundee, on Thursday, I was in Dundee, right? In case he changed his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Philip James was a professor of diving heads. Yeah. That was why he was up there. Well, we'll explain yeah. the connection. Um, with divers, you know, that if they come up too quickly, they get the bends. The bends is nitrogen in the, in the bubbles of nitrogen in the, in the muscles and so on, and it can cause death, but it can also cause a lot of damage in the brain as well. So you don't do it. You come up a stage at a time. And um, he had been in uh, medical in uh, diving medicine for years and he was then a professor and in charge of all sorts of things and so he knew what the damage was like in the brain and he had been looking before he went to America he had been looking at uh, brain scans and the damage in the brain could look very much like the damage that a diver uh, sustained if he came up too quickly in the brain, so your diver dies because he does it. You know they have an in, uh, a post mortem. They cut the top of his head and have a look at his brain or whatever. And the scan was almost like a mess. So Philip James knew uh, about this, you see, and of course he, he, he that was why he asked me to go up. So I went and he showed me this uh, video, which was of this professor in um, in the states who had. Uh, actually been treating people with MS. Um, it, what happened was he had some um, hyperbaric oxygen chambers, individual chambers, this professor in America, and he had treated, been treating people for all kinds of complaints, cancer and all sorts of other things with hyperbaric oxygen. And for some things it worked and for others it didn't. But in the course of this, and he'd taken his histories of the patients, he realised after a bit that he had been treating people who also, despite what they came for, who also had MS. So he looked at the results of those, and he discovered that that was, seemed to be doing quite well. And that was the subject of this talk and this tape that I then saw. Well, I came, I, I came alive, didn't I, at this? Right? So I said to Philip, um, well, what do we do? He said, well, I've got a little chamber here in Dundee which I've been treating the odd person. He you know, said, it seems to be OK. <laughs> so, so I said to Philip, well, but we can't do that. If we're going to treat people, then they've got to be treated properly and, they, and we've got to do it again. These people, we came back to life. So he said, well, what are you going to do about that? So I said, well, for a start, we've got to redesign the chamber because the chamber's like a sausage 
they were his original sausage shape with a yeah. circular hook, uh, uh, a door at one end, and you you wheel people in. They got used to this with the divers, wheel them in on a stretcher. So basically, like an MRI scanner. Yeah. So I said to them, if people with MS are going to have this, then they have got to be able to either walk in or be pushed in in their wheelchair. Mm. We cannot have people being. So anyway, we set this one up. First of all, with what we got, while we were arguing with chamber manufacturers about what they could do about the chamber. Basically, cuts all of us to us all. We said, look, you really want a pudding shape chamber, not a sausage, right? It's got to be six foot tall so that we can have a five foot door. And what they said was that when you've got a circular chamber, right, if you then introduce a five foot door, then their weakness is at the four points, and it, you we wouldn't be allowed to do it because it's weak. So I said, "Well, fix it politely, fix it." So they went away, and they came back with the idea. And this is what actually happened: they took a one-inch thick solid steel sheet of about nine inches wide, I suppose, and Maybe if they cut the five-foot door. They then put that all the way round the inside of the door at right angles to the door, to the wall, so that it was strengthened all the way round. And they put the door in. Oh. And that is, how the, that is how they are today. So how did we go from arms to MSRC? Right. We set up MSRC, Multiple Sclerosis Resource Centre, mm-hmm. back to roots. Information. It was information on the telephone. So we decided to continue purely on that basis of information. It must give you a great sense of satisfaction that you have been involved in something that is still helping people and helping more people today across the country. Several things. The first is short answer is yes. The longer answer is that. The things that I'm particularly happy about is the information that people can get, the leaflets. If you've got MS and you're on your own, we provided the answer to that. And that is, that's the biggest and most satisfying bit about it all. And it's still working.